Wait, what did I say? Tune into your inspiration, into your, <laughs> your excitement, your bliss, your ecstasy. What turns you on? Like really, not sexually, just sexually, that too. But whatever turns you on in life completely. Like what sets you on fire? What makes you feel orgasmic throughout everyday life? There's something there. Why do you think you're excited about the things you're excited about? Is that just random? Does the brain know which chemical to fire off when it sees a certain color in a certain shape? Oh, that's really exciting. No, it does not know that. What excites you excites you because it's more of yourself and it's leading into more of yourself. And what doesn't excite you does not excite you because it's less conducive to fully expressing the unique theme you came here to explore. The who you are wants to express itself. The way to become really clear on that and become really a manifest embodiment, vessel, conduit of that true frequency of your true self, of your true who am I, is to follow that joy, that resonance, that inspiration, fearlessly, 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 even when you're afraid, when you're completely afraid, fearlessly, fearlessly follow your joy with respect to other beings, free will, with integrity in other words, but that's it. That's your only limitation. And it's not a limitation. It's what you actually desire. It's actually part of your resonance. Because as soon as you sacrifice your integrity, you feel bad. No? You lower your frequency. There's something out of place there because it means you're believing in lack. You believe that in order to manifest what you want to manifest, you need to take something away from someone else. You're not being creative enough. You're not being a reflection of infinity. Infinity would never think that. Infinity always sees ways around things, inside of things, next to things, coexistent with things, simultaneous to things. There's never an obstacle because there's only infinite parallel realities. If there's an obstacle right here, shift to parallel reality where there's not that obstacle and let that obstacle be in its own reality, its own obstacle. If it wants to be there, let it be there. Don't try to push it away so that you can walk there. Shift to a different frequency where that person is not standing in your way and go about your way. Does that make sense? There's infinite parallel realities within presence energy. Presence energy consists only of parallel realities. It doesn't consist of a singular reality. It consists only of parallel realities. What I mean by that is that the past 10 seconds have not been one reality out of many parallel realities. I'm saying there is only parallel realities, which means that every nanosecond of those past 10 seconds were each parallel realities coexisting next to each other, I just chose to move my consciousness from this frame to that flicker, to that flicker, to this configuration of energy, to this configuration, until it seemed like I was a being continuously moving. The sense of continuity is an illusion. There are only parallel realities. So how could there ever be an obstacle? There can only be an obstacle if there is limited resources. In an existence where there's only parallel realities. There is no lack of resources. There's only parallel realities. So whatever you need is somewhere. <laughs> In other words, if it's not here, it's somewhere else coexisting with here. Figure it out. Change your frequency. Be more creative. Learn whatever you need to learn. Why is your higher self, quote unquote, forcing your attention to be stuck in the similarly looking infinite parallel realities that all create a similar pattern, recreate themselves. All in parallel realities. There is no continuity, even in your stuckness. But why do you create the illusion of the same things showing up for you that you don't like? Why? Either because you haven't changed your frequency as a state of being, as a responsive and powered individual, or you have not learned a lesson from what you actually want to learn. You actually want to expand. That's always the intention of your higher self and you, ultimately. is The intention is to expand, to gather, to expand, to become more abundant in your expression of self, of infinity. And so either you have to learn something that you haven't paid attention to yet, and therefore the struggle of keeping you in stagnant reality is eventually worth more than not doing that and not having you learned a lesson that you learned through being stuck for a period of time. However, you can make it easier on yourself, A, by realizing your state of being is independent from circumstance. You can always experience yourself in whatever way, from whatever point of view you wish to experience yourself. You can generate a frequency of consciousness that is however you like it, regardless of what's happening or not happening. That does not mean I am uncomfortable, unless I say I am uncomfortable because of that. State of being is independent from that. 
Can you see that? Can you glim can you feel that consciousness, the I am, vibrating at a certain state of being? Is in a sense separate from, completely separate from the circumstance. Not really energetically separate from, but state of being wise, separate from or completely independent from circumstance. Has nothing to do with each other. Nothing whatsoever. Although it does. It does in the way that <laughs> circumstance is a reflection of state of being. But in terms of feeling wise, it has no relationship. You've never experienced a circumstance. Ta -da. You have never experienced a circumstance. Ever. You've never experienced a circumstance. Does that hit home or not? It's another subtle realization. But you've never actually experienced a circumstance. It's impossible. It's mechanically, energetically impossible to experience a circumstance. Then what have you experienced? No, I've experienced a lot of things in my life, right? That's your response. No, I've experienced this circumstance. I've seen China. I've seen my mother pass away. I've seen this. I've seen many things. I'm proud of, I'm very proud of my accumulation of experiences. But I've never actually experienced a circumstance. How can that be true? What are you experiencing right now? Are you experiencing the skin on my face? Are you really? Or are you experiencing your state of being? Are you experiencing my voice right now? Really, are you? Or are you experiencing your state of being? Circumstances are smoke and mirrors. They are empty illusions. They really are illusory. Not irrelevant, but ir illusory. Again, one of these things that traditional spirituality has messed up is to say that because everything is illusory, it's irrelevant. They're totally different things. Totally different things. Yes, it's a complete illusion. Physical reality is a complete non-existent illusion. It doesn't make it irrelevant. It's the most relevant thing in infinity. You've never experienced the circumstance. You only ever experience your response to the circumstance. Your idea about the circumstance, your perception of the circumstance. In other words, collectively speaking, your state of being, your vibrational attitude. You only ever experience yourself. You cannot ever truly experience a circumstance. You don't experience this finger. You experience yourself responding to this finger in your own unique energetic way. Does that make sense? So you've never experienced a circumstance. In this way, you can see that circumstances do not ever have to demand your state of being to look a certain way, to feel a certain way, because circumstances do not exist. That would be silly, would it not? Let me take my cue from my circumstances, because I know they don't exist. Right? It's what we're all doing. Let me wait for that which does not exist before I make some relevant moves. Stop waiting. Never, ever, ever wait again. Never wait. There's always a way not to wait. And there's many ways to wait that you're not even aware of. There's many ways in which we've developed the habit of waiting. It's so much fun when you see this. It's so much fun when you explore all these subtleties. Oh, wait a second. Not traditionally speaking, but in a very subtle, weird, wicked way. I am waiting right now. And as soon as you notice that, it's so liberating because then you start acting on the thing that you wanted to do, whether or not you seem to have the means to do it. For example, you just start acting according to your desire regardless of whether you seem to have the means to do it. And as soon as you set your first step, suddenly, suddenly right there underneath your foot, the, the, the floor is placed. So from not doing anything, from waiting, all you see is like, no, I can't step over the edge because there's nothing there to support me. But as soon as you choose to go, no matter the steps are being there or not, whether you're going to fall to your death or not, as soon as you make that choice, you start supporting yourself. And since circumstances are empty illusions, smoke and mirrors reflecting you, suddenly, bloop, you're creating the path as you go. And at some point you trust that so much because you see it happens all the time that you stop actually like, you stop looking at your path and you start looking up and you start running and you start flying. Yes. You got to know that this is an infinite universe. You got to know that circumstances are illusions and your state of being is what creates your reality. And that's all what the way of self-actualization is about at the heart of it is to realize that your state of being actually formulates physical reality. It's very empowering to realize that. But you got to have faith. You got to have faith.